Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to change it up a little bit. We're going to do something a little bit differently. I'm going to add a new host application to the mix of our Rampant Design Tools tutorials, and I'm talking about the new free Media Composer First application. And I want to talk about a subject that I think is very important, and that is music editing. And I'm going to use the Rampant Music for Editors product line in this tutorial because I want to show you why you don't need to just go in and be adjusting music compositions by just slapping a fade on the end and saying that's good enough. You should be able to take any length music track and edit it down to fit inside of any length timeline with little to no trouble at all. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do inside of Media Composer first. All right, now a couple things I want to talk about before we get started with the tutorial. The first is that if you're new to Rampant Design Tools and you're really not sure if these elements are right for you, what I encourage you to do is to head on over to 4kfree.com. Sign up for the Rampant Design Tools newsletter and you're going to get access to a ton, over 100 Rampant Design Tools elements that you'll be able to download absolutely free for you to work with in your projects, which is really going to give you a feel for how great these elements are. And again, it doesn't cost you a penny. That's 4kfree.com. Head on over now and sign up. You'll get the newsletter and you'll get emails for great deals on Rampant Design Tools products. Now, the other thing that I want to remind you of is that if you don't know this already, you're definitely going to want to check out the Rampant Previewer app that you can download on the Apple App Store. This preview app is going to let you get in and get a preview of all of these great elements right on your iOS device without having to go through each element manually on your computer. This fantastic tool is absolutely free and it's under 10 megabytes. You'll have this app downloaded in no time and you'll be able to check out any one of the Rampant Design Tools elements anywhere that Wi-Fi is available. Okay, now before we get rolling, what I'd like to do is to introduce you to the product that we're going to be working with. I am here on the Rampant Design Tools website. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here. And by the way, I do want to point out that as I'm scrolling down, you're going to notice right here at the top, Rampant Edit Essentials. Now this might change based on when you're watching this tutorial, but take a look at this. Regular price, $118, on sale, $59, $118, on sale, $59. That's what I love about Rampant Design Tools. Well, one of the many things I love about Rampant Design Tools is there's always something great on sale. So make sure you sign up for that newsletter so you get all of that information sent right to your inbox. Now I'm just going to scroll down a little bit farther and here's the product that we're going to be working with right here. It's the Rampant Music for Editors line. You'll see that we have three volumes, each volume $59. And what's going to happen is that when you make your purchase of the music and you download it, I'm just going to come to my hard drive here. I'm going to come to my footage and into my Rampant folder here. You will see that in my Music for Editors that I have a whole bunch of different folders here. And I'm going to pick one of these folders. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to troll down Coffee Rose here. You'll see that not only do you get a choice between AIFF and WAV files, but you'll also notice that inside of this particular track of music that I not only have a 10, a 15, a 30, and a 60, but I actually have two different versions of a 60, and I have the full piece of music. Now, I love the fact that I'm given these very common durations of music, 10 seconds, 15, 30, 60, but believe it or not, in most cases, I actually don't ever use them. It's great that I have them in case I'm working on something that I need maybe for television or let's say I'm making something for the digital cinema and it has to be a specific length. These tracks are perfect for that, but there are so many times when I'm working where I'm going to have something that's an odd length. And this is where I come in and I utilize that full track of music. Now, let me Command or Alt and Tab into Media Composer first. And once we're inside the application, you'll see that the piece of music that I'm working with is called A New Day. Now, there's a couple things that I do need to point out before we get rolling. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to call up the audio tool, Command or Control and 1 on the keyboard. And when I hit play, you'll notice that the music is very loud. And I'll just jump down a little bit further here. There we go. And you'll notice that it's peaking right up here at the top. Now, let me just tell you right off the bat that that is not uncommon, especially if you're bringing in tracks from an audio CD. You'll notice that quite often. 
So we need to make a couple of adjustments. Now there's something else going on that's not readily apparent, but when the music track comes in by default, Media Composer first will mono it, and we want to make sure that we change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the audio mixer, which is my shortcut on the keyboard of F3. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. You can simply navigate up to the Tools dropdown and find your audio mixer right here. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this track back into being stereo and I'm also going to gang these two tracks together or now I come from old school media composer so we refer to it as gang back in the day it's now more commonly referred to as group and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the audio level for this track somewhere down around minus 10 now you'll see that if I hit play on this track this track's looking a little bit more the way that it should looking stereo and those audio levels are doing pretty good now I'm just going to turn the volume down just a little bit in my headphones here there we go. Now, what I want to do before I take this piece of music and I drop it into something that I've actually put together, I want to show you how we can get in and create a custom timed piece of music. Now you'll see that right now that this music is 2 minutes and 22 seconds long. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this music somewhere around a 1 second or 1 minute and 15 seconds, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of music, I'm going to drop it into a timeline here. Now, I don't need the audio waveforms. They are actually not going to help me. Everything that I need, I've got here on either side of my head, and that is, of course, my ears. Now, the first thing I need to check is, does this piece of music start right at the very first frame of the clip? And I'm just going to come back, and what I've done is on the keyboard, I've hit the caps lock key to turn on audio scrubbing. And as you can see by our audio tool, it does. Now, the next thing I need to check is right down at the end, what is happening with the end of the music. In a lot of cases with music tracks, whether they're stock music tracks or not, you might get a little bit of a runoff at the end. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to come back a little bit here. I'll just hit play. Here we go. And I'm just going to stop it right there because I want all of this as a bit of a buffer so that when I cut this down, if I need to extend things down just a little bit, you'll see that up at the top here at my center duration, I have a seven second and four frame bumper. So I'm just going to remove that. You'll see already I'm almost at the 215 mark, which is going to make my life a lot easier. So let me just bring it down to be 215 even so that what we have to do is just cut out one minute. Okay, I'm just going to come back and what I want to do is I want to try to find a place where the beat dictates that I can make an edit. Let's just play it here. That's a good place right there. Now you'll hear if I come back, there's the, edit, there's the beat right there. You can see it. That's the best part about working the way that I'm working right now is that if you turn scrubbing on, you can go through frame by frame and find that exact beat. Okay. So that's going to be our end point. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go plus one minute. What I did is I on the numeric pad, I pressed plus one, and then I pressed the period key twice. That gives me two double zeros, okay? So this is one minute here. Now what we need to do is we need to find another edit point so that we can then get in and actually cut this down to be 115. So let me just come back a little bit and just play this so I can hear it. Okay, now I went a little bit farther. Maybe I'm just going to undo that here for a second. Let me actually just redo that here. Hold on one second here. That's a pretty good one right there. Now you can hear it right there. Okay, I'm going to mark that as an out point. Let's now cut that out and hit play. Now you hear that there's a slight pause in there, but don't worry. I'm just going to remove one frame and you'll hear that that music edit was almost perfect. Now the big question is what's happening down at the end? Let's come all the way down to the end and you'll see that I'm actually at one minute and 15 seconds. The only problem that I now have is that my track ends a little bit abruptly. And I like to give it just a little bit more runoff. Well, let's head back to the beginning of my track and see if there's anything that I can do about that. Well, that's perfect. You can actually hear it right there. I've actually got the same little bit of music that loops itself twice. Take a listen. Here's one and two. 
So let's just remove one of those audio loops. And I just marked it right there while I was actually listening to it. There we go. So what have we done? We've actually shortened this piece a little bit at the end so we can now give ourselves back that two seconds that we just took out. And what we've done is now just make this one minute and 15 seconds long. Now you'll see that at the end now, if I hit play, Very nice, I'm just gonna use a quick dissolve here. I'm using the backslash key on the keyboard to call it the quick transition window. I'm just gonna add that in here. So now take a listen to our edit. And now listen to the end. And what we've now done is create a custom length piece of music. So now the big question is, can I do that twice in two completely different scenarios? Well, let's find out. Okay, so let's come back to my Rampant Design Tools sequence, and I have a timeline in here, and what I'm gonna do is just remove the audio that was there, it was offline anyways, and let's grab our A New Day clip. Now, this timeline is about 50 seconds long. Now we could cut down the full length track or what we could do is we could take that 60 second track and we could cut that down. So keep that in mind. But I think in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a challenge and we're gonna cut down the longer piece to fit inside of this 50 second and 12 frame timeline. I'm just gonna switch over using the toggle source record window. I'm just gonna turn on my waveforms here just cause I wanted to just see here. I knew there was a little bit of an audio transition in the middle here. So that's a perfect place to start right there. And the best part is you don't need to have the entire first part because really we can pick this up and make this work however we want. So remember, audio scrubbing is turned on by using the caps lock key on the keyboard. And there's the first frame of where our music is gonna start. You can hear it, okay? I'm gonna mark that as an in, I'm gonna hit play and take a listen to where the music's gonna start. A perfect start for it, okay? So let's now take this music. I'm just gonna remove the out point. We're just gonna drop it in. You'll see way longer than we need it to be. Okay, but you can also see where it's going to come to an end, which is right here. Okay, so maybe I'm going to cut the music off about there. Okay, and let's see how much of this we need to remove. I'm just going to select my video track. I'm going to press T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark an in and out point for that range. 19 seconds is how much we have to cut out. So let's find a suitable place to do our edit. Okay, I'm just going to hit play. Right there was probably it. You'll see in a lot of cases, you don't have to go very far to find that right edit point. Right there. Okay, now again, plus 20. Now, we gotta find another edit point. Okay, let's come back just a little bit here. Right there. Okay. It was almost perfect. To be honest, I wouldn't change anything. And here's the really interesting part about this whole concept that I'm showing you. Conceivably, if you get an edit that's on the beat perfectly, you should be able to adjust that track and have it be the same no matter where you adjust it to. Let me show you what I mean. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to my timeline. I'm just gonna press play a little bit so I can hear the piece of music, okay? I'm gonna find a place to come back into this here. Right there, okay, that little symbol crash. Okay, again, make sure caps lock is turned on. Right there. I'm gonna mark that as an out point and we're gonna adjust our timeline and what I should do is just turn off the waveforms here to bring this edit right down to where I am right now and conceivably what should happen is is that I should be able to hit play and the edit should still be perfect no matter where I adjusted it to. Let's take a listen and hear if it is. Perfect. And here's the best part. You'll remember that I adjusted the end of my timeline short. Well, all I gotta do now is just extend it down to the end here. I'm gonna add a dissolve in because it's in that trail off section at the end 
And what we now have is a perfect ending to our music and a perfect end to our waterfall montage. Here we go. Check it out as we go to the end. And just like that, we've gone in and created a custom length piece of music, really with no effort required at all. All right, now don't forget, if you want some great free 4K elements, head on over and check them out at 4kfree.com. And to check out the entire Rampant Design Tools product line, you can head on over and check them out at rampantdesigntools.com.